Mm-hmm. No, not that. You could just open a new window, Firefox. Work with me here. Okay. Let us begin. I will go over the Duolingo thing in a bit. So, welcome everyone to lesson two of the Beginner's Dutch course. Glad to see you are all here again. Uh, well, I don't know if you're all here. I will check that in a bit. Um, but glad to see so many of you here, at least. And this time we're off to a bit of a quicker start. So let's keep that momentum going and just jump right into it. Uh, this week's topic is vrienden en familie. Vrienden en familie, friends and family, as you probably guessed. Um, and I will go over, well, yeah, so what we will do today. We'll go through the homework, as we usually do. Uh, I think I told you to do the homework. If not, I hope you saw the homework and did it anyway. And if not, then no worries, then we can just still discuss it. And you will still hopefully learn something from it. Uh, let me grab my booklets. I have too many booklets over here. And none of them are <laughs> the booklet. That is impressive. Ah, no, this one isn't. Cool. Uh, then we go through the word, word for the week, as always. Um, then we are going to learn about numbers. Ooh, very interesting. Don't worry, we'll, we won't do a lot of mathematics, just a little bit. Uh, but learning how to count, how numbers work in a language, always very interesting, I think. But I, I did study physics, so that might be my bias. Uh, afterwards, we will go through uh, some basic verbs and pronouns. Um, the verbs to be and to have, mainly. And then I think we'll have a break around there. Uh, then we will learn about some names for friends and family. And finally, we have the sense of the week and a little quiz at the end. Um, I did also say that we were going to do this exercise, exercise one of the last lesson. Uh, and I think we will have time for this because it's not a super long class, I think. So, uh, without further ado, let's start. Again, if you have any questions, please feel free to interrupt me, raise your hand or say something in the chat. Uh, there might be a chance that I don't see it if you raise your hand because that always kind of works weird by if you share your screen it's kind of hard to see sometimes so if you raise your hand and I don't respond to it please just unmute yourself and interrupt me uh, you are always free to do so anyway all right then let us begin uh, with this skipping this because otherwise we will be here forever I hope you're doing well maybe it is nice to go over that in noise uh, because I don't think we did that last time. So, of course, in Dutch, we also ask how people are doing, kind of as a greeting. And oftentimes we also don't expect, just like in uh, English, we don't really expect people to answer sincerely. Although we don't take it as uh, far as uh, the Brits or the Irish, where we you can just say, who gaat it? And the other person will say, who gaat it back? And that is considered a normal interaction. Uh, you do have to answer, but you don't have to answer sincerely. So, the question is, how are, how, are you, how are you doing? It is, repeat after me. Hoe gaat het? I did a tremendous job. And then you can say, uh, I'm fine. Het gaat goed. Or, or just goed. Prima. Prima. P-R-I-M-A. It's also a thing you can say, which also means something like, good, fine. Um, if you feel bold and want to express your inner feelings, more of your inner feelings, you could say, oh, het gaat niet zo goed. I'm not doing so well. Het gaat niet zo goed. So it is not going so well. Whoa, very difficult. Or if you are feeling very terrible and you are talking to a friend and not just your cashier, you could say, het gaat slecht. Het gaat slecht. Slecht. It just sounds bad, right? It's going terrible, bad. All right, let us move on quickly. Normally in a physical class, I would go and ask a few of you, but uh, digitally, this is, has proven to be very awkward. So I will skip it. Um, ah, I was hoping now the alignment would be a bit better, but alas, we are still here. Um, 
Furthermore, the uh, transitions aren't working, but it doesn't matter. But it's just, uh, I hope you all have the thing in front of you, so we can just go through it like this. Uh, the exercise here was to combine the Dutch words with English words that sound approximately alike, specifically the vowel sound. So we have in Dutch vis, we have rook, we have koe, we have week, we have gek, we have kou, we have klok, and we have ziek. And the goal was to match those with the English words. Now, now that I have said these words out loud, it might be quite easy to kind of uh, mix and match them. So we will go just go three answers. Uh, so the first one, fish, is kind of the same sound as miss, and translation is fish. Uh, rook kind of sounds like coke. It is a bit different, but similar enough. If you pronounce it that way, or you have a, a a sound in your own native language that sounds similar to that, you can also just use the O from there. So, rook, and it means smoke. Then we have ku, which means cow, and sounds similar to you. So, if you can hear, it doesn't sound exactly alike, it's a bit shorter, it's a bit further back in your throat, but we're not being. Uh, <laughs> We're not being ant fuckers, as you would say in, in Dutch. <laughs> Mierenneukers. Nitpickers. That's a very, way better word. Let us, let's, not, let's ignore what I just said. Then, four. We have week. Week. Uh, take note of the W. There's a V, not W. So you won't say wake or week, but week. And it sounds similar to bake. And week just means week. Uh, I'm not sure if they, we derived this from the same origin or we just stole the word from English, but alas, uh, it means the same. Then we have gek, gek, which means weird, crazy, uh, and it sounds similar to back or back. Uh, so if you notice, it doesn't sound exactly the same, but close enough. Then we have cow, a cow, which means cold, the cold specifically, and it sounds similar to how, how. Cow, how. So in English is a bit longer. A, you can see that it's a, it's a trend. English sounds are a bit longer, a bit further in the front of your mouth, and that should be a bit more back and a bit shorter. So cow, how. And I apologize, apologize again for the weird formatting. Uh, then we have clock, clock. Sounds similar to dock, dock. And, that's in, and that is kind of dependent on which uh, English accent accent you take on, uh, because the the O also in English can sound a lot like uh, ah, like in hot uh, in American English. And in uh, British English, you would say more like hot, uh, similar sort of. Uh, again, if you are from one of those countries and you think you know better than me, please feel free to interrupt me because I'm probably lying. But uh, alas, uh, it's an O oh sound. Clock. And then finally we have Zeke, Zeke, which is kind of similar to freak, freak, or any other E sound. Again, English a bit longer, a bit more in the front. Okay. Um, if you don't ask any questions, I will assume you, you do not have any questions um, to prevent the awkward silence at the end. Um, then uh, we will skip to exercise three because the translations were there. Um, and I will ask, like, alternatingly, I will just ask a few of you to give me the answer to the exercise. So, the first one, I will not pronounce that because it will take it, uh, well, we give it away a bit. Um, which one has the same vowel sound? Um, let's see. Caitlin? <laughs> This is exercise three. Yes. Okay. Um, I said also that it's pronounced vak, so zakin. I was only using the rules. Yeah. I wasn't using any. So if these are wrong, I apologize. No, this uh, perfectly. It's, uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, so this vak is the first sound, and then you have tak, zakin, and pakken. So very good. Uh, they mean often branch businesses and to take respectively. 
Okay, then I will do the next one. The next one is pronounced as Z, which means C, uh, which is kind of always confuses me, confused me when I was learning German because they call a say is a, a say is a lake uh, and a mir is a sea and for us it's the other way around the mir is a lake and a sea a say is a sea which is easier to learn if you're english maybe confusing if you're german um then oh so the say and then the, this is similar as preken the first one so say preken hecken and then de for the last one so de is pronounced a bit weirdly, but uh, because that is an unemphasized vowel, uh, it means the, that is one of the two definite articles in Dutch. And de is not pronounced as de, but as de, because it is weird. Um, all right, I will go through this a bit more quickly, uh, because otherwise we will be here all day. So the first one is pronounced as ik, and so it is the same as the second one, prikken, which means to poke. And ik means I, and we will get to that in a bit. Uh, the third, fourth one is, as you saw, de. And this is kind of a cheeky one. Uh, it's all of them. So hebben is pronounced the same as the, as the e in de. Weken, weken is pronounced the same as the e in de. And gered is also pronounced the same. As the uh, in the. Um, anytime the letter E does, uh, does not have stress in a Dutch word, it is pronounced as a uh, instead of as e or a. Uh, when, and I hear you ask, when do you know if there is stress in the word? Um, oftentimes you can't really know uh, because you have to kind of learn where all the stresses are in language, but Dutch is pretty consistent with this. And it's usually the first syllable in Dutch is stressed. So as you can see, preken, hekken, pakken, weken, those are all stressed, uh, the first syllable, except if it's if it starts with g, g e, fur, v e r, or b, b e, then it is unstressed. Um, and so it was is gered instead of gered. Don't worry, we'll get into that later. Just so you know. Then, fifth, oom. Um, so that's the same as bonen and boom. Uh, oom meaning uncle, bonen meaning beans, and boom meaning tree. It doesn't sound the same as bommen, which they are bonds. Then we have duur. It sounds the same as huren and u. Duur means expensive, huren means to rent, uh, and u is the formal form of u, which we'll get into again in this lesson. Then the last two, kwam sounds the same as tak, and vriend sounds the same as ski. All right. Um, that is most of the vowel things we will do in this like specific practice about vowel distinctions in this course. But if you want to practice this more, I made a website slash app, and there will be an app soon, I'm still working on it, uh, which you can find on page four. It is very nicely titled, https double uh, colon slash slash Dutch language collab dot github dot io slash Dutch language course, just rolls of the, th of the tongue. Uh, and there you can practice these vowel distinctions between lax and tense vowel sounds or any vowel combination that you want to practice between. You can practice writing it and hearing it. And I think it still works. I haven't checked in it in a while, but uh, check it out. Uh, did you have a question, Stefan? Stefan? Or did you just accidentally unmute yourself? Oh, sorry. No worries. Mm -hmm. Ah, look at this nice highlighting. OK. And um, then we will move on to het woord van de week. Het woord van de week is oude hoeren. So repeat after me, oude hoeren. Uh, this means literally to all uh, to, like as, as, a, ver as a verb, uh, 
old prostitute, um, roughly, uh, a bit less nicely. Um, it means, not literally, to kind of do what this guy does, just um, bullshit, basically. But not per se that you are telling things that are not true or things that are whatever. It's uh, just talking a lot without making a specific point and just word vomiting, basically. It can be used in a negative way, like what this guy is doing, annoying this poor bloke trying to have a drink. Or it can be used in a kind of positive way. If you're just like hang out with your friends, shooting the shit, then you could also call that Auhuden. Very useful word. Um, yeah, and so pay attention to how you pronounce the OU as AU and the OE as U. Auhuden. Okay, then we will move on to a very exciting subject numbers. Wow, have you seen them before? Yes. Again, the formatting, uh, atrocious. So uh, I, this is the sixth time I do this, and I have never found like a very interesting way to present the numbers, uh, except for, well, that not except for, that would uh, mean that it was interesting, uh, only to just name them and have you repeat them after me, and then maybe do that again, and then have you do some exercise with them. Um, so that is what exactly what we are going to do. Um, Numbers you just need to kind of practice a few times and they will stick pretty quickly. Numbers are kind of the easiest thing to learn. Um, the last language I really remember trying learning is Swedish. And I did get somewhere, but the only thing I could consistently pick out from announcements on train stations were numbers, which are, to be fair, the most important thing. Um, and that is what I want to impart on you now. Be able to recognize some numbers. All right. Are you ready? Let us start with the first. I, I will just say them and then please repeat after me if you're in a place where you can do that. Otherwise, just really think about it, you know? Okay, let's go. Null. Ein. Twee. Drie. Vier. Vijf. Zes. Zeven. Acht, negen, tien. Wow. Now you learned how to count from zero to ten in Dutch. Great job. Let's continue. From eleven on. Elf, twaalf, dertien, veertien, vijftien, zestien, zeventien, achttien. 19, 20. Yeah, All right. I'm just noticing that there is no 17 in your booklet. I don't know where that went. The forbidden number. Um, yes, so as you can see, the numbers from 10 onwards follow a pretty normal pattern, just like in English, just a number with 10 at the end, except for 12, 11, 12, 13, and 14. They're a bit weird, but 11 and 12 are very similar, and 13 and 14 are also very similar. So I don't think this will provide you with any trouble. Um, the numbers of 1, 1 to 10, they're just the numbers. Uh, maybe one thing that's worth noting is that sometimes the number 7 is pronounced as zeven by some Dutch speakers. Um, I don't think that will throw you off that much, but you can try to sound. It sounds a bit more Dutch, I would say, if you say zeven than if you say zeven. Um, in the sense that it is what is not the way that is kind of the proper way. It's kind of the rascal way to pronounce the word. So take it as you will, zoven. Then from 20 onwards, things get a bit weirder, uh, but not much, just a little bit. And uh, there's one major thing you have to know. Uh, no, two major things. That is the names of the uh, multiples of 10 in Dutch. Um, and they are in general, just the name of the number with tuch at the end. So let's just go through those very quickly from 20 to 100. 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 
90, 100. Wow, now you can count to 100 in Dutch. Great job. Growing up so fast. Um, so the only exceptions are, yeah, 20 is kind of weird. Uh, 30 and 40 are a bit, bit weird, but they're like weird in the same way as they are in the 10 to 20 numbers. And 80 is a bit weird. For some reason, we slap a T in front of there. Uh, like every single Dutch child gets that wrong all the time. Uh, unless so, uh, until someone just uh, kind of beats him over the head with it. Like, no, it is 80, not 80. Uh, I have no idea why we did that. Maybe just to pronounce, make pronouncing things consistent. They all start with a consonant now. Uh, um, so yes, uh, also note that the T-I-J, uh, because it's also unstressed, it is pronounced as tuch and not as tig. Um, so tuch, twintig, not twintig. And if you want to sound really, really uppity, if you're the queen, then you can say, oh, yes, I am 20 years old. Ooh. But in general, uh, everyone pronounces it 20. Then we get to the weird part, which is how to pronounce numbers, the numbers in between. Those are also pretty important. Uh, unlike in English, a language that somehow sometimes makes sense, uh, in Dutch, we pronounce the numbers in the wrong order. <laughs> so we don't say 21, like, the higher number first and lower, we say it's the lower number first and the higher number. So we say, don't say 21, we say one and 20. Kind of like old timey English uh, would say it, you know? Or how they do it in Game of Thrones, if you... Uh... So it is 21, uh, 32, 43, 54, 65, 76, 87, 98, and then from 100 onwards, we start start doing things normal again. So it is not one and a hundred, but it is 101. But then if we go down again, then we start and we have 123, we say 103 and 20, 123. Uh, I think this is really <laughs> annoying. And I, I get this wrong all the time uh, because for my masters and for this, I speak English way more, so in my head, Five, 54 makes more sense than 4 and 50. Uh, and so when speaking Dutch, I just mix those two up all the time. If you are from a language that also does this, like German, that this will be easier. Um, if you are from a language that makes sense, then this might be difficult. Uh, oh, it's not difficult, but it's just something you have to think of and will we'll mess up all the time. Um, one more thing. Uh, you might have seen this umlaut here and might have gotten scared. I guess like, oh, the Dutch also have umlauts. What? I wasn't told about this. Um, and we don't really. The only purpose, the only ever purpose of uh, a trema, umlaut, uh, diaresis, whatever you want to call it, above a, num uh, a vowel is to indicate that it's the start of a new syllable. So if we were to get rid of this uh, umlaut, then we would just have three E's after each other. And then the Dutch would get extremely confused. Like, what? How am I supposed to pronounce this? Is it 2-1-30? 2-1-30? 2 Ah, I do not know. How? Please help me. Someone bring him some structure. Uh, but luckily there's the humble diaresis, the, uh, the umlaut. Uh, and if you put it on top of the thing, it means, oh yeah, here, this is the start of a new syllable. So it is 2 and 30 uh, 3 and 40 And for the rest, you don't really need them because they don't end on an E. Um, you might also see this sometimes on top of an I, like in, okay, I can't think of, a form, uh, of an example, uh, but it's mostly on top of E's to just separate them from whatever. And that is the only thing they do. They don't change pronunciation, so don't worry about that. Okay, so now you have almost learned how to pronounce numbers. There's just two more catch catches that I want to talk about how to pronounce years because you want to sound Dutch when you pronounce a year right so in Dutch um, you kind of pronounce the years you could always kind of pronounce them fully so you can say 1969 uh, 1996 sorry see I even I messed it up uh, you can pronounce 1996 as 1996 uh, in fact, that's the only way you pr pronounce them. You cannot, um, oh no, 
you can pronounce them like that, or you can just say 1996. So 1996, you can say that. Uh, but that's only for like the number, the years in between 1100 and 2000. Past 2000, you cannot do that anymore. So you can't say the current year is, in English, you could say it's 2021. That sounds fine. And as you can say uh, 2021, that sounds stupid. So you would say 2021. Um, and I now realize that we have not talked about the number 1000. Uh, it is 1000. Thousand. And a million is a million. And a billion, so this is different, is a milliard, not a bill, not a billion. Because their English does not make sense. Because a billion clearly is by million. So it's a billion times a bill a million times a million. Um, but in English it's not. It's a million times a thousand for some reason. In Dutch, a billion is a million times a million. So it would be an English trillion. Um, English did in fact used to have the word billiard and, and a milliard. Milliard, I'm not sure how you pronounce it. And then billiard, that sounds kind of weird. And then trillard. But they got rid of it for some reason. But in Dutch, we still have it. So it is milliard for a, tr a billion. Yes. And then a billion is a trillion. Numbers that we don't really use that often. And if you want to impress your friends, this number is also fun to pronounce. Maybe you try to repeat after me. 888. So that is our quintessential difficult uh, word. If you have ever, ever practiced Swedish, it's like 777. That's sucks. I'm not sure if anyone of you are Swedish, but your, your words suck. Um, then ordinal numbers, you, you, I hear you ask, what are those things? There's like words are like first, second, third, fourth, whatever. Um, they are pronounced as you just add st at the end if they end if they are in between 20 and 100. So you have 20 st, 31 st, 100 st, 88 st, whatever. Uh, even it's actually also beyond 100. It's also like that. I'm not sure why I just put it from 20 to 100. So basically everything on top of 20 ends uh, is pronounced as st at the end. Um, and then in between 1 and 90, you add d. So it is tweede, vijfde, uh, vijftiende. Um, and this is also, oh yeah, that's why I said it. Between, so if the word just ends on a number that is between 1 and 20, then you say de. So it is not 100, like 115th in English would be 115de, not 115ste. Okay, I feel like I've already lost half of you. So we'll just move on. <laughs> I'll just mention the first 10. Eerste, first, tweede, second, derde, third, vierde, fourth, vijfde, zesde, zevende, achtste. Oh, acht is also weird. Yeah. Achtste, then negende, then tiende. And then elfde, twaalfde, dertiende, veertiende, vijftiende, zestiende, zeventiende, achttiende, negentiende, twintigste. Okay, now we're all on the same page. Fun fact that very little of you will care about. Uh, in English, you don't have a word for asking the how many of something something is. So you can't ask, um, so something that you could potentially ask in the context of this lesson about friends and family. Like um, in Dutch, you could ask, like, which child are you? Are you the first, second, the third, or whatever? And you have a word for that. Who feels the? And in English, that translates to how many which is not a word. And for one exercise in this booklet, I had to use that. I wanted to use that word. And I just spent like half an hour thinking about, OK, how the hell or trying to Google where is this word in English? But apparently that word just does not exist. Um, and so you have to like jump into hoops or that's not that's not a, jump through hoops in order to say that. Fun fact. OK. Uh uh, yes. I have a question. Um, it's um, for 2020, you said it's 2020. Yeah. So what would 2021 be? That would be 2021. Thank you. Yeah. So you would just pronounce it uh, 
the second thing separately. OK, cool. Then let us do some quick maths. And uh, I'll just punish someone by asking asking them. Um, Aida, can you tell me what is 22 plus 14? Um, yes, uh, so it's uh, 22 plus um, 14, mm -hmm. which is um, 36. Yes, very good. Um, and what is that in, in Dutch? Um, okay, I don't know how to say it exactly. Uh, three and uh, 30. No. Almost. No, uh, it is. Um, they sent uh, 30. Yeah, perfect. Yeah. Great. Nice. Good job. OK, then uh, I'm looking here like I have your names on my booklet. Uh, Faith, could you say what is 7 keer 9? Um, something, 7 something. Mm -hmm. um. The care means times. I didn't tell you that. But. So seven times nine. Mm -hmm. 49, which is. Nine and. Uh, elf, 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 <laughs> no. Not completely. OK. <laughs> it is, uh, and 7 times 9 is uh, 63. Maybe that's easier. So you first say the second number, and then the first, and then the bigger one. So 3 uh, and mm -hmm. I don't know what 60 is. 60. It is the. Do you know what six is? Zes. Yeah, and then just add tug at the end. Oh, zes tug. Okay. Yeah. Can you say it in full? Um. Yep. Yeah. Uh, I can't remember what the first one was. No, I can't say it in full. Drie en zestig. Peter Peter. Okay. Drie en zestig. Yes. Very good. Nice. OK, then more maths. Um, and I will fuck up some of your names. Please forgive me. Um, and I have no idea what, what country you're from, but Panagiotto? Yes, that's fine. OK, great. Could you do, what is 99 gedeeld door 11? Oh, OK, so it is 99. Divided by 11. Mm -hmm. OK. Um, 9. Yes, perfect. Great. OK, and then finally. The <laughs> very difficult one. Anyone wants to volunteer? Because I feel bad for picking someone for this. No? I can try. Oh, I yeah. can try, maybe. Nice. Okay. 117 min 80. 117 uh, minus 80. Mm -hmm. uh, equals 30. Almost. Uh, 7, 7 and 30. Yes, perfect. Very good. Great. Heel goed. I think uh, the answers are not here. Uh, Simona asked for the answers. Um, this is without the uh, X mark, but I will write down, I think, the one you asked for. 63. Okay, cool. That was from mm -hmm. before. Yeah. Oh, who, did, who said that? It was Simona. I, I'm oh, just, I wrote that before when you were talking about the word for how many. Ah. Yes, I will write that one down. That's a good one. So, 
Who fails that? How many? OK, if there are no further questions, we will move on to heaven. A very useful word to have in your vocabulary. We like to make jokes around here. Um, <laughs> um, so it's not a very difficult word, but um, this will also introduce us to all the sort of Dutch conjugation and to all the pronouns, especially uh, specifically the subject pronouns in Dutch. And so let's just go over those. On page 10, you can also see this. If you did not want to turn at your page, this is some motivation to do so. So I have is, repeat after me, ik heb. Uh, you have is either jij hebt or u hebt. Jij hebt, u hebt. And notice that the B at the end of the word is pronounced as a P. Uh, because we like to be difficult. So, ik heb, uh, jij slash u hebt. Um, and um, this is also good to remember, or no, can't remember the things you don't know. Um, in a, if, if there's a question in Dutch, we turn around the subject and the verb. And the, for some reason, I have no idea who thought of this, we drop the T in, we spill the T of the uh, hept here or any vowel, any verb basically. So it isn't hept jij, but it is hep jij. I do not know why this is the case, uh, but it is the case and you need to know. So it is not, uh, so in this second example at the bottom here, we can see, do you have some time? In Dutch is heb je even tijd? And it is not hept je even tijd. Um, and you might also notice, oh, you, there's an E here and here's an A. What is that? We'll get to that in a bit. Don't worry. Uh, and then we have the three third person pronouns, singular in Dutch. Hij, zij en het. So it's hij, zij, het, heeft. He, she, it has. Then we have we have, which is wij hebben. You have, plural, is jullie hebben. And they have, zij hebben. There's luckily no plural formal form in Dutch. That would be even more annoying. Um, and even more annoying, there's no gender neutral pronoun in Dutch, not really a good one anyway. So some people use hun, which is the possessive form of they, so it would be like there. Um, and some people use die, uh, which is uh, meaning that, uh, but then like in a personal way in Dutch. Uh, but unfortunately, they don't really have like widespread adoption like they has in English. So, yeah, it's a bit unfortunate that we ha have such a gendered language, but uh, can't do much about it unless you have a good idea for a gender neutral pronoun. And I've, I've tried to think of one, but it's, it's difficult. Uh, then moving back to U, to the uh, formal form of U in Dutch. So it's just pronounced as U. Um, and it's also worth noting that sometimes you can say U heeft instead of U hebt. And with sometimes I just mean you can just pick which one you like. Uh, U hebt sounds more formal. U heeft sounds less formal. But you're using U anyway, so you're being formal. Uh, when do you use U? Uh, I would personally prefer to never use it. I really don't like having a formal form. It's very annoying. Then you have to like think about, oh yeah, how well do I know this person? Do I want to grant this person some kind of higher status than I, I have because I'm using a formal form? Blah, blah, blah. Very annoying. So I, I just personally try never to use it. But sometimes it's good to use it if you want to be nice to your grandma or something, or to a grandma, to your grandma, it's kind of weird. Or if you're meeting the king or something, like you do. <laughs> um, so you can use U there. In general, you use it to um, for people you don't know very well, strangers or people in some kind of higher position than you, like a, sometimes a teacher or, yeah, just general people you don't really know well and you want to be kind of formal to. Um, to your like fellow students, you wouldn't use U. That would sound very weird, like you don't really want to know them. Um, and to me, please don't use U because I, that's weird. 
Here are some examples with Heeft. She has too many books. Zij heeft te veel boeken. And cats have a pretty chill life. Katten hebben een chill leven. Um, I think we will get to all the other. Yeah, we will get to all the other pronouns later in the lesson. Uh, and also we will talk about the difference between jij en je en zij en ze en wij en we. As you can see on page 11 in your booklet. I keep looking here because I have you on my screen here. But yes. Um, do you also drop the T in the question form with U? For the third person? Um, no, no. So just heb jij. So it's also heb U. That or is a very good question. Uh, and I should have mentioned it. Uh, no. Which is okay. more annoying. For U, you do not drop the T. Okay, so in question it would be heb U. Yeah. Okay. And the reason for this is that U actually used to be a third person form. Um, and it kind of moved away from being a third person form to being a second person form because that way it makes way more sense. If you talk to someone, you don't talk to them in the third person. That's kind of weird. I'm also not yeah. talking to you as, uh, oh yeah, C uh, Simona asked the question. No, I just say you asked the question. Um, and so that's why that, that doesn't happen. Okay, thanks. Good question. Thanks for asking. Okay, then to be also very useful verb, of course. Um, the other things are the same. Um, let's just go through them. Ik ben, uh, jij slash u bent, um, and then ben jij. Here you cannot say u is. That sounds very weird. You can say you can only say u bent. And then the question becomes ben jij. Hij, zij, het, is. Nice and easy, same as in English. Although in English you can pronounce it more as a Z, is. And in Dutch it's uh, an S, is. And then wij, jullie, zij, zijn. Zijn. Examples. I'm so tired. Ik ben zo moe. Uh, we're friends now. Wij zijn nu vrienden. And what is being even? What is zijn überhaupt? So that is a word we stole from German, obviously. Überhaupt. Um, and that's probably not exactly the same how you would pronounce in German, but that's how you say it in Dutch. All very useful sentences, I would say. Okay. Is it break time? It is even, wow. I once finished before break time. Holy shit. Genuinely proud of myself right now. All right, then we actually have enough time for a break. Um, we do still have to do quite a bit, namely fill in this thing and then go through an exercises. So I will suggest 10 minutes break and then we reconvene back here at five to the time, eight, seven, seven, yeah, five to seven. And afterwards, uh, we will go through the Duolingo rankings. Ooh, exciting. And I won't expose your score. I will just mention people who did their homework. Don't worry. OK. And feel free to ask any questions in the meantime. Uh, and I'll see you back here in 10 minutes. Um, yeah, I would. I want to ask something because I did some of the Duolingo exercises. And then mm -hmm. I think um, the name for boys is Junge or Junge. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Something like this, and then okay. I'm. I think it's also because of German. But in German, you would pronounce it with the e n at the end, but um, they don't often. And I was I was wondering when you pronounce the e n at the end of words. For example, uh, say um, seven for uh, seven. We do pronounce the e n, but we don't for junge. So yeah. <laughs> that is a excellent question. Very. Uh, you listened very well to the pronunciation there. Uh, in general, you kind of not really pronounce the N at the end. Um, to, and you can do it to varying degrees, and the more, basically, the more you pronounce it, the more formal your language sounds. So, Jungen, if I would say it as Jungens, uh, or usually you would say Junges. If you would say something like that, or if you say one one boy, you would say jongen. Uh, that sounds quite formal. And in this class, I will usually pronounce the en just to 
let you hear it. Uh, and also because I'm seeing the word and then trying to pronounce it very carefully. Um, but in general, most Dutch people kind of muffle that N away, so they won't, they will say Jonge. Or yeah, basically just don't pronounce it actually. Um, and, but this can happen to varying degrees. Um, so s some people from, nah, I'm say more rural areas, but like from Rotterdam or something, they will put more emphasis on that E and then would say something more like Jonge. And then really, like in normal Dutch language, I would say the N is kind of like, oh, it's there, but we're just not mentioning it. And in less formal speak speech, people would um, like make a point of not pronouncing the N. So the more you make a point of not pronouncing the N, the less, the more informal you sound. Um, so I would recommend saying something like Jonge. Um, okay. I don't know. No. Yes, hi. <laughs> I don't so know I, um, I just want to ask, how, how would you use our horn in a sentence? Is it more like a noun or a verb? Like, because like Which in word? English, the, the word of the week. Ah, our uh, horn? Yeah, I would, it's a, it's a verb. It's a verb, so you would say, we are like we are our heron. <laughs> yeah, our hooting. Yeah, how, however, that's not how you do it in Dutch. 
Um, if you want to know how how you would say by if you speaking of like your group of friends in the past, you would say wij waren aan het oude hoeren. But that's kind of a construction that we don't treat here. This uh, you if in just the present simple, you would say wij oude hoeren. Okay, so it's just a verb, not also a noun like in English. No, it's not a it's not a noun. In, okay. If it, if it you can make it a noun because it is derived from a noun, but then you would separate the old from the hoeren, and then it's just kind of a mean thing to say, I guess, about so. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> mean description. Just, <laughs> yeah, because I was thinking because bullshit you can use as a noun, and the verb like to bullshit as well. Mm -hmm. and, but it's also <laughs> okay. Yeah, no, indeed, but uh, it it doesn't mean exactly the same as bullshit. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. If you want to use the the noun bullshit, <laughs> it would be onzin in Dutch. Okay. Onzin, which we literally translate to, not it, it means nonsense. Oh, can you write that maybe? Yeah, I will in chat. Thanks. And I put the the proper article with it. We'll, we'll go over that in next week. What the differences between the the articles, but. Just so you know. But would, would nonsense be like an old timey thing to say? Or no? Nonsense? No. You, you, that's not the Dutch word. Okay, yeah. Because yeah. in English we say like they're talking nonsense. Like you know, you wouldn't really say that. <laughs> no, we just uh we just uh stuck with that uh word, <laughs> I guess. I mean there are more informal words. Um so I guess there is a word for bullshitting, um, which would be uitje nek lullen or just lullen, which would uh, which comes from the verb to lull, like to lull someone to sleep. Uh, but lullen also means dicks, so it sounds like <laughs> dicking out of your neck. <laughs> yeah, maybe I won't use that. <laughs> but yes, good question. Oh, it's over time. Yes, it's over time. Great. Great to have you back. Fix some formatting. Nice. Um, yes. All right. Uh, I will just start. Oh, no. OK. Oh, and you share my screen. Yeah, that's the thing. It's like I'm forgetting something. Um, there it is. I shouldn't do it like this. You can also do that. Mm, no, let's just go like this. So the family tree. Normally, I again I would make you do this as an exercise, but I think it's a like the other teachers will make you do this, but I'm the cool teacher, so I won't make you do this exercise. Um, which would be to fill in the family tree that you have in your booklet here. Um, why I don't think it's a very interesting exercise is because you can just kind of read it. And the words are in the back, in the word list. So I will just go through it with you, and you can write down the English word yourself. Um, as you can see, the, the index is that squares are for men and circles are for women, and we don't have a, a triangle for non-binary people because they don't have a word in Dutch, um, sadly. So. Starting from the top, or no, let's start from the, um, that's interesting. Let's start from the bottom. Um, or let's, yeah, I don't have the thing on the slide, so we'll just do this a bit manually. Uh, so we have here the dochter and zoon, daughter and son in Dutch, um, which together are called kinderen, kinderen, meaning children, or as the hip uh, millennial parents would say, the kids. You could also do that in, in Dutch. And a singular child is a kind, K-I-N-D. These words, again, are almost all in here. So I won't write them down. Uh, then we will move up to us, basically. Here, I am the woman. Um, so, well, first of all, let's just do husband and wife. It's just man and frau, man and woman. 
very straightforward. You don't have like fancy words for this. Um, and if you want to be, now you can't really be gender neutral about this. You can say uh, you have a different word, which is echtgenoot, uh, which is like spouse, and echtgenote, which is like spouse, but female. Uh, because yeah, we can't have a, a nor uh, just one word for it. We just have to separate it. Uh, but if you're not married, you can refer to your partner. Uh, you can say partner. That is very neutral. Partner, the partner. Um, or you can say, and this is really annoying in Dutch and the same in German, um, je vriend of je vriendin. So your friend or your female friend, basically, which means your boyfriend or girlfriend. We don't have a separate word for friend and boyfriend and girlfriend. It's just all friend or female friend. And they can mean whatever you want, depending on the context. So if you're introducing someone and it's like, oh yeah, this is my friend. Oh yeah, but it's not really like my not my boyfriend, but my like friend friend, you know? <laughs> we really should come up with a word for that. Um, I mean, you do have a word, your partner, you can say that, that's, that's fine. We can't introduce someone as, oh, yeah, this is not my partner, Jimmy, you know? <laughs> That is uh, a bit awkward, but alas, that is a situation we have to deal with. Then, as far as siblings go, you have your brother, which is your broer, and your sister, which is your sis. Um, we don't have a word for siblings, because we're Dutch, don't like gender neutral words. Um, so in, if you want to ask if someone has siblings, you just ask, do you have brothers or sisters? Have people who are subsistent? Again, annoying. Um, it's just a long thing to say. Um, but what is nice about Dutch is that we can you can refer kind of specifically to your brothers or sisters by age. So you can ask, uh, you can refer to, uh, if you refer to someone who is as your brother, that either means this is my broer, you, it either means that they're just a brother, whatever, but more generally means that it is a brother that is older than you. Same with this. Uh, if you want to refer to and you can specifically refer to a brother or sister younger than you by adding the diminutive article uh, suffix, sorry, uh, which would be broertje or zusje, which is younger brother or younger sister. Um, and that's used a lot. Uh, in, a, in Dutch, if you say this is mijn broer, this is my brother, you would assume that they are older than the person who is saying them. Uh, but to the collective of brothers that you have, you can refer to them as broers whatever. Then we move over to uh, your sister who is married to uh, your schoonbroer, um, which is brother-in-law, means in the in-law is not a suffix but a prefix, and it is schoon, which means clean. I don't really know how we got there. Uh, and more specifically, your schoonbroer, so your brother-in-law, is referred to as your zwager. Zwager. I do not know why, you almost never say schoonbroer, you say zwager. Um, uh, there's no similar word for schoonzus. So, yeah, fun fact. Then, if your brother and sister have kids, they would be your neefje or nichtje, of neef of nicht, if they are older than you. So in Dutch, we do not make any distinction between, like, between cousins, and nephews and nieces. They're all neven and nichten. It doesn't really matter if they are bro uh, children from your aunts or uncles or children from your brothers or sisters. They are referred to as the same. And we only make distinction based on age. So your older brother or older, uh, older cousin or older nephew or older, again, cousin or older niece are referred to as neef and nicht or neefje and nichtje. Uh, oh nee, or dus neef en nicht, they're older. And if they're younger, they are neefje en nichtje. Which uh, works. And again, of course, there's no general word to refer to them. Uh, so they are your neven en nichten. And you don't have a word like cousins. That is like easy. Because why would it be? Thomas, how do you spell like the kind of younger version like nafia or like yeah is it just j-e at the end or uh yes for these cases it is so nafia and nichtje and is and it the same for brother and sister 
Yeah, so for, for brother, you have there's a, there's a, suddenly a T in play, so it's broertje, but for the zusje there is not. Um, I can just mention this very briefly. If there is a je at the end, it means it is a smaller version of something. It's diminutive. Uh, a lot of languages have a diminutive. English doesn't really have one, but it's sort of like you can say. Mm -hmm. uh, nah, I can't really. It's not very. Doesn't work very well in English. Um, but in Dutch, uh, if in Dutch people fucking love to use diminutives, they just use it all the time. Slap it on everything. Oh, boekje, muisje, neefje, nichtje. You sound kind of cute and like you're not talking very seriously. Uh, and I, I don't really like that per se, but uh, a lot of Dutch people like to use it. Um, the rules, unfortunately, for making them are way too st stupidly complicated. Um, it is always something with a je. But there, sometimes there's a P, sometimes there's a T, sometimes there's a K. What? Sometimes there's an NK. Ugh. So I don't teach you the rules because those are annoying. Um, and they're like, they're like really a lot, like 10 cases or something. Ugh. In the advanced course, we go over them once and whatever. But in general, just know if you see a year, it means small. Okay, thank you. Cool. Then we speed up and move on to your father and mother which is father and mother and yeah father mother and together they are your ouders ouders so we do have a word for that that's nice um also yeah I don't know, fun father it is for me it was always never a surprise in the fifth star wars movie that dark vader ended up being his father I mean, it's just in the name so that was kind of ruined for me unfortunately because it was dutch and now you can ruin that for someone else then, if your one of your parents has a sister, they are called your tante. Tante. And if they have a brother, they are called your oom. Oom. This is a fun word, I think. And moving up one, finally, your grandma and grandpa are called opa and oma. Or if you want to be old timey and respectful. You can call them your grootvader and grootmoeder, grandfather and grandmother. But uh, no one really does that. Uh, together they are your grootouders. That is a normal thing to say, like grandparents. Then one more word, I guess, that's useful to know, uh, two more, I guess, is the prefix stief, which means step. So your stepmom would be your stiefmoeder. And half for like half siblings usually yeah can you do a half something else i don't know uh half broer half sis i'm not really sure if you do that in english but in dutch it's kind of similar it's kind of common to do so to refer to siblings who only share one parent with you oh and then uh grandchildren are called kleinkinderen just in, not like grand but like small oh little tiny baby children all right that is it for family member names um otherwise the, th the theme is friends and family but there are not that many words for friends you have vriend which is friend you have vriendin which is female friend um you can always use vriend for everyone but there is a separate one for women I don't know. Uh, and the collective of your friends are, are your vrienden. vrienden. Okay, now you are wiser and more prepared for the real world. So let us move on to something less applicable. Pronouns. I do like talking about pronouns. Um, so we already went over the personal pronouns, the ones you use in place of the subject in a, or of a sentence, or that are the subject in a sentence, basically. So we have ik, jij, u, hij, zij, het, wij, jullie en zij. But here, are, here come a few different ones that I teased at the start. So we have je en we. Um, so jij en je are both informal and u is formal. Or no, I would just call these normal and these, this one formal. Um, but jij and je are kind of different. And you will see that P Dutch people more, way more often use je than jij. And that is because the difference between u and jij is that it is formal versus informal. But jij and je is uh, specific versus unspecific. So if I say, 
jij hebt van die vrienden, then I mean, uh, uh, you have those friends that really annoy me or something that would follow after. Like you, like you, the person I'm talking to, you, your friends really fucking suck. Um, but if I say you have funny friend, ah, you got those friends, you know, I'm not talking about any you in particular. I'm just talking about the platonic you or something, just like a uh, different version of like how you would be very fancy. So you could say oh, one has those friends. No, you say you have, uh, you have those friends, you know, um, it's the you and you know, that's probably the best way to put it. And it's, mm, you don't really take them to know. The similar distinction is between wij and we. Um, so this is this is my pet theory of Dutch, so don't take this as gospel, but I think that the wij and we is also specific and unspecific. And in particular, you could think of it kind of as um, if your language, some languages have this, have inclusive or an, uh, inclusive and exclusive we. So either it's the we including the person you're talking to or is the we excluding the person you're talking to and i think the we excluding the person you're talk, uh, talking to is wij so wij hebben de loterij gewonnen it sounds like uh, if you say wij hebben de loterij gewonnen it sounds like uh, meaning we have won the lottery it sounds like you are talking about you and some other group of people that have won the lottery and you're telling the good news to someone else if you say we have a loterij gewonnen, that sounds more like you are including the other person. Uh, but this is kind of my pet theory, and it is not, I think, like how most people think of it. Maybe, maybe subconsciously. But I think this is how it subconsciously works. But otherwise, it is more specific and non-specific. So we have a loterij gewonnen. You're not really including a particular group of people. It's like, oh yeah, you know who I'm talking about. You know, we. And if you say, wij hebben de loterij gewonnen, you're like, oh ja, yeah, me and my bros have won the lottery after spending 10 million dollars on tickets. Okay, that's the difference. Uh, you will also see this with zij, will become ze, uh, in the plural and the singular, and it just means specific or unspecific. Just think of that, forget my exclusivity story, unless you like talking about that. Okay. So those are the personal pronouns, the pronouns that take the, par, uh, the place in the, of the subject in the sentence. Then we have the object pronouns, the ones that take the place of the object in the sentence. So if I, uh, I don't know, like first one, hij hoorde mij, he heard me. So me is mij. Wow. And then we have jou, which is you. And u is also you, but object. And then we have je again. And je here again, unspecific version of that. And people would will use that way more than jou. Zij vindt je leuk. She likes you. Uh, like, like, likes you. Uh, kan ik u helpen? Can I help you? And then for him, her, and it, it is hem, haar, and het. Luckily, there are no unspecific versions of that. Ik zie hem niet. Wij gaan naar hem toe. Hebben jullie het gehoord? I don't see him. We're going to her. Have you heard it? And then we have us, which is ons. So leren ons Nederlands. This should be teach, sorry. Uh, in Dutch, no, no. So they teach us Dutch. A lot of Dutch people get this wrong, me included. Um, the Dutch verb for teaching, you can also use the word for learning. So you can say, they learn us Dutch. And you hear a lot of Dutch people say this. Oh yeah, they. Uh, I'm going to learn them. Blah, 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 blah. In English, that doesn't make sense, but in Dutch it does. Then uh, for pl you plural, it's jullie, again, very easy. It costs jullie veel moeite. It, uh, it costs you a lot of effort, it takes you a lot of effort. And then them is hen, hen. Zij luisterden naar hen, they listen to them. Cool, cool, cool. And then we will move on to the possessive ones. Very, also very fun. Uh, my, here in Dutch is mijn. Ik heb mijn vriend lang niet gezien. I haven't seen my friend in a long time, or I haven't seen my boyfriend in a long time. It's ambiguous because. Yeah. And then we have jou with a W and je again. So you can just use je everywhere. It's nice. Jouw ouders zijn aardig. Your parents are very nice. 
or uw, if you want to be formal. Mag ik uw schoenen poetsen? May I shine your shoes? And then for his, it is zijn. Um, not confu to confuse with to be. So zijn, zijn and zijn fijn. His signals are nice. And then for her or hers. And uh, no, it's just hers. Yeah, no, also her. Uh, it is haar, which is the same word as hair. So uh, you can make this beautiful sentence. Ik hoorde haar 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 kammen. I heard her brush her hair. <laughs> then we have for our, we have ons and onze. We'll get at lesson six. We'll talk about why, well, why it is one or the other, uh, but just use ons. Uh, no, use onze in general. So onze bruiloft was in ons huis. Our wedding was in our house, in our house. Um, and then for your, it's just jullie again, really easy. Jullie partners passen goed bij jullie. Your partners fit you well, or you match well with your partners. And then, hun is there. Zij stelden hun ouders aan hen voor. They introduced their parents to them. Uh, oh, no worries, Sean. See you next week. Okay, so there was a lot of talk about pronouns. Any questions uh, before we actually do an exercise for once? No? Cool. Then let's start do. Um, hmm. Now we will do the dialogue exercise first, and then if we have time, we do exercise two. We will probably don't. So the dialogue exercise, exercise three in your booklet. Um, you have a dialogue to do with one another. Um, and the goal is to first uh, together figure out what the things in the, the th things, the blank pages, blank spaces, what you need to fill in there to answer the question or answer above. And then have the dialogue together. Talk about your friends and family together. Uh, and I will put you in the Brea rooms again, fun times, and I will give you 10 minutes for it. Sound good? Yes. <laughs> good. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's always, it's, for some reason, it always fails the first time I make the rooms. I know one of you did not want to be in a room. Uh, so one of the rooms will have three people. And then it is starting. OK. Oh, no, no, one, one. Ooh. One room has one person in it because one person left. Sneaky, sneaky. I will fix this. Good luck. Yeah, you did not want to be in a room, right? I was not assigned, apparently. Oh, OK. Well, then I, OK, never mind. Then I will put you in the room. Oh, sorry, it was Hannah who did not want to be in a room. Never mind. I uh, mixed you two up because you were, you were the two people who sent me messages, but uh, I will assign you now to a room. See you in a bit.
sorry, Imogen, I uh, mixed something up. You will be moved to a room promptly. Okay. Sure. Yeah, sorry, Hannah. I uh, I forgot to, uh, I forgot that you I mixed you up with Panajota, uh, but everything is settled now.
Hello. Hello. Welcome back. Welcome back. Hello. Hello. Yes, I think most of you are back. Fantastic. Then we are almost done with the lesson. Before we end, there will be two, three more things. Um, or first, I will want to ask, how did it go? Were you able to do it? It goes smoothly. Do you have any questions? We got there eventually, I think. Okay. Yeah. Uh, me. I think yeah. I can take a I can't. <laughs> <laughs> okay, great. Then we will do two, two things. Um, I'm not sure yet how I will use Duolingo, but uh, I, for now I will do this. Just call out to people who did the thing and I'll say, yeah, good job. So Anna Julia, Faith, Caitlin, Gabriel, uh, Panejota, Rosita, uh, Kruthika, apologies for mispronunciation, Ronja, Sean, I think it's like save, and Stefan. Uh, yeah, well done. Uh, good job. You did your homework. Nice. And then I think what I can do is also see who scored the most points this week on Duolingo. And that person is. Doo -doo -doo, Koleka, if you are here, good job. And the second person is Hannah, good job. And the third person is Panijota, good job. Nice. Good job, all. If you also want a good job, do the Duolingo thing next week. Uh, for next week, you have to do the numbers one and family one, if in case you don't get the notification. Then the second thing we will do is the Zin van de Week, the Zin Nun. Oh, please, man. Come on, you can do it. You can do it, Firefox. Yes. So we have van je familie moet je het hebben, which means uh, I actually don't know how to translate this. Uh, <laughs> your family sucks, basically. <laughs> and then secondly, it is the apple fault niet ver van de boom, which is very similar to the English one. The apple does not fall far from the tree meaning you will never escape the being like your parents. Very fun. And then we will end. Um, now it is 10.30. If you have to go now, very understandable. Uh, then I will say tot volgende week to you. If you are have to spare some five minutes, we will do a short quiz to see how much you have retained today. Uh, so feel free to stay, feel free to join, um, whatever you feel like. All right, you are here. Test one. If you did not join, you did still join. Okay. So, 12 through 12, what is that? Yes, it is indeed 144, 144, 12 times 12. Good job. Those who got it, who is in the lead? Let's see. It is safe. 
think I pronounced it sort of correctly. Yeah, true enough. Yes. True or false, 88 is pronounced 88. <laughs> for my trap. Uh, the actual pronunciation is 88. Very sneaky. Don't forget about that T. Uh, let's see. Ooh, Sim has taken over. Hannah is the highest climber. Good job, Hannah. Now you have to type your answer. 33 plus 77. Yes. You have a... It is indeed a 110. Very good. Oh, wait, is it actually? No, it is not. Oh, no, it is. No, it is. Never mind. It is. Yeah, I got myself confused because I remember that last semester I fucked fuck this question up and put in the wrong number, but it is correct. 110. Good job. Uh, for those who wrote it, actually wrote it out for the one person. Even gooder job. Ooh, Sim, save is climbing in. Nice. Next question. This is a puzzle, so you have to put things in the right order. So just conjugate Zang. Like that was too little time. Mm -hmm. But good job, those who got it. 80%. It is Ik Ben, Jij Bent, Hij Zij Het Is, and Wij Jullie Zij Zijn. Good job. Ooh, it's a bit of stream. Oh, Sim is going strong. Multi select. So you can pick multiple answers. Zij, mm hmm, drie zussen. <laughs> all together correctly. Zij zijn drie zussen, zij hebben drie zussen of zij heeft drie zussen. You can't say zij is drie zussen. That would be weird. You can't be three sisters. Ooh, some changes. Ooh, Hannah climbing, very good. Anna Julia, even climbing even more. Good job, good job. All right, you have the time. Type your answer. What would you say here? Conjugate the verb zijn. <laughs> Bent. Ooh, which one is it? It is bent. Six of you got it correct. Nice. Bent u koning Glover Alexander. Yes. In u, it does the T does not drop. Good job, those who spotted that. Ooh, good guy. Climbing, climbing. But same still strong, strong number one. 
quick translate younger brother and you have to be quick Twenty seconds. Answers. Oh, yes, broertje. Very good, very good. I saw some answers that were close. Uh, unfortunately, uh, I said younger broer, which is very close. And I think I saw broerje, which are also very close. Um, you would not know about this e, so I'm sorry, but them's the the breaks. Ooh, Sim and Hannah and save. Still strong. All right, true or false? The mother of your sis is your tante. Wie is the mother of your sis? Is false because the mother of your sis is your mother. The mom of your sister is your mother. The sister of your mother is your aunt. Ah, I pull it sneaky on you, but not too sneaky for Sim, sadly. Eight correct answers in a row. Jeez, good job. All right, another puzzle. So put the translation. That's translations here. They, them, there, and her. them in this order. Have you got this correct? It is neat. They is zij, them is hen, there is hun, and her is haar. Good job, those who got it correct. Let's see, did the rankings change? Uh, of course, Simona got it correct. Very good job, Hannah and Save. Sorry, in between. Oh, some change in the top five. Good, good. And a quiz, easy. Just click a, a button. Which pronoun can't be placed here? Mm -hmm. Father is a leuk. Which one can not? Mijn vader is leuk naar mijn vader is leuk naar jouw vader is leuk naar of jullie vader. Oeh, Ooh, no one got it correctly. It is jou, because jou without a W is not a possessive. All the others are possessives. Uh, this is from a very well-known Dutch song called Mijn vader is een leugenaar. My dad is a liar. It's pretty fun. I recommend looking it up. Ooh, so yeah, nothing changed. I don't know what I was expecting. <laughs> um, translate this sentence. He is his boyfriend. Is zijn vriend. He is his boyfriend. Very good. No changes in the top five. Final question. Type your answer. Double points. Whoa. Type the word, which is both a pronoun and a verb. This is a sneaky question. So, which word did we learn this lesson? Which is both a pronoun and a verb. A 
herb, by the way, uh, things like coffee, eggs, you don't know. Is this possible? I'm going to know the things we talk Close, close. Ah, someone put an our hoor in. <laughs> Very nice. But indeed, it is Zijn because it can be means to be and also his. So good job, those who got it. Our hoor in is uh, could be a pronoun, an, a, a verb, and a noun. And I saw somewhere it was like a, a pronoun and a, also a noun. But yes, let's see who are the winners. Number three, it is Zay. Number two, it is Anna. Number one, it is. Good job. You got the. All right. Then we have come to the actual end of the lesson. Only 15 minutes past the actual time. Wow. Right on time. Um, so that was it. This lesson. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope you learned something. I uh, hope you learned some words, also fun. For next lesson, please do your homework on lesson 13 and the homework on Duolingo, which you should have gotten assigned by now by an email. Uh, and if you didn't know or you don't know what to do, it is family one and numbers one. Yes, so we're not doing things in the order Duolingo tells them because we're we're better than that, you know? Next lesson, the topic is traveling, and we will the main things we will learn is to use how to use the verb to go and travel words, you know, and about we'll learn about articles, de and het, which are can be tricky if you don't know how to do it, but uh, I'll guide you through the jungle that is the Dutch language. Um, you can always ask questions anytime you have questions, just via Teams or mail. I don't do Teams, I don't check my mail that often. It's scary. There's like supervisors there. Um, or whatever. Um, yeah. Okay. Thanks for the lesson. Lesson. Hope you enjoyed. Tot volgende week. Thanks. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. See you next week. Thank you. Thanks. Bye bye. Bye.